Boom! Yo, welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you made it because today I'm gonna show you how I made this. So listen, if you're new to video editing, if you're new to filmmaking, if you're new to this channel, then just consider subscribing because I put out content every week to help you become a video Jedi. My name is Arthur, so hey, let's get into it. Now, this is not one of those copy exactly what you see type thing, but it's more of understanding the tools and the uh, and how I use them to create a desired effect. So if you're new to After Effects, this will be really helpful. But if you want to skip ahead, I have put timestamps below, so feel free to do that. Right, let's jump into After Effects. All right, so the first thing I've done is I've dragged my footage into a new composition, cut it where I want it to be cut. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to track the bayonet cap in the video right here. To do that, I want to go to my tracker over here on the right. If you don't see it active, go to window and make sure tracker is checked. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit track motion. Once we hit track motion, we're going to be presented with our tracker points over here. So what we want to do, let's expand this window up and let's move this, this box over here onto where we want to track and you want to find an area where there's the most contrast uh, let's just shape this the way we want it to be shaped all right now this is going to start our tracking process i'm going to zoom back out and we want to analyze forward let's go all right so once your video has finished tracking we're going to right click create new null object what this is going to do is it's going to help us control uh the tracking data on this layer but to do that we first have to go over here we want to edit target click that yeah select that now which is now three okay uh we want to say apply and yes x and y dimensions okay so what that does it just basically copies all that data onto this null. That helps us control whatever else we're going to put on top of there. Okay, now that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our reference image, which is our light bulb. So I just quickly got this off the net just to help me reference. Keep reference. And what we're going to do, we're going to resize this to fit where we want the light bulb to be. Let me just grab the ends there. So I'm holding down shift as I change the scale here. That looks about right, something like that. Then what we're gonna do is we wanna parent this, um, this reference image to that null. You wanna get this pick whip, right? Icon over here. You wanna drag it onto your null three. Now you can see that the light bulb gets tracked to the bayonet cap. What we want to do now is we want to make sure we got none of these layers selected. Just so just click outside of those. We're going to start drawing our own light bulb. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace over the reference image and we just start drawing. Oh, let me reduce the sides a little bit. We're going to start drawing out this light bulb bit by bit. All right. Once we've got our light bulb, you want to drop down here on your shape layer, which we can rename by pressing enter, which we can rename bulb. All right, we wanna go down into contents, shape, stroke, and then we wanna go on the cap here, we're gonna change it to round. And as you can see, the points at the end here change to round, okay? Let's just see how that looks. As you can see, it doesn't track. So to make sure that it tracks, we want to again, we want to pick whip here, grab it, go to the null. And the cool thing about it now is that we can actually get this and move it anywhere we want and it will track. So let's get rid of this reference image. So we're left with our light bulb. Um, what we want to do is we want to control the path of that light bulb. Click down the drop down menu. 
uh, we want to say, let's just hide all this for now. We're going to go to add trim paths, all right? Go to trim paths, hit the drop down. What you want to do here is you want to go to your start and end, right? You want to make sure it ends on zero, all right? Go to your start, add a keyframe, move to where you finish drawing around there, right there, and we want to make that a hundred. Now this is where it gets interesting. Uh, we want to move the bulb forward to the point where I actually start drawing. So around there, move it around there and control the motion. Now this is where you start to add your own keyframes to kind of track the speed of this. So I'm going to make the speed come up a little bit so it's in line with the tip. So if I play that through, we get this effect. Now, sometimes that doesn't look right because I'm just a little bit off. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the size of the stroke. So it starts at 13. What we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we want to make it real thick, all right? I'm going to add the keyframe on the stroke here and you don't really see me missing it as much there. But when it gets here, this is where I want it to kind of maybe go back down to 13 or 14. So I can actually move this keyframe over here. So it goes there. Boom. All right. So once you've got the light bulb where you want it, the next part is adding this flame over here. So if we move over here, there, we want to add a flame there. So what I did here was literally get a green screened candle like so, right? You can get this anywhere, YouTube, wherever you want to get it. What we're going to do here is we're going to mask out the flame. Now to do that, make sure the layer is highlighted, go to your pen tool, and we're just going to simply draw a mask around that flame. Once we've kind of done that, again, adjust the height and width to where we want it. So now what we want to do is we want to key out the green. You want to go to your effects presets over here, type key, get key light 1.2, drag that onto your layer, right? You're going to go over here and go to the screen color, get the eyedropper, click green, and that gets rid of the green for us. And again, we're going to pick whip that to the null object as well. Okay, so everything stays in track. Then we're gonna like bring it in just at that point. All right, so when it flames on, the illusion is, ooh, flame. Again, adjust this to make sure it's in the right place. Uh, one thing I like to do is, if I hit M on my keyboard twice, and that will just bring up all my mask functions for this layer. So I wanna make sure, I just wanna feather this out a little bit, right? add a little bit of feather to it. Okay, so it just kind of blends in a little bit more. Right, so if I play this out. Yeah, now we've got fire. That's the illusion, really. Okay, the next part is to switch the light off. So I click my fingers, there. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go down to our bottom light layer. Okay, we're gonna split that, all right? Now, once we've split this layer, we're going to mask it out again. Make sure it's selected. Go to your pen tool. We're going to create a basic mask. OK, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just something uh, that masks me out. Boom. All right. Great. So this is going to act like our light switching off again. We're going to hit M on the keyboard, hit M again, and we're going to feather this mask. So it's just a little bit softer. Okay, so when we play it back, nighttime. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tint this layer. So again, we're going to go to our effects over here. We're going to put tint. We're going to grab the tint, drag it onto that layer. All right. And naturally, it's going to go into the black and white mode. But what we want to do is choose any color we want. Instead of white, let's go for red, right? Be like a nice cherry red. Right, so. 
All right, now the effect's almost finished. All we're gonna do now is add a bit of a glow to the bulb. Is Now we're gonna split it where the light switch is off. There, somewhere there. Split that layer, the bulb layer. And we're gonna get a glow in our effects. And we either double click it or we can drag it on, but we're gonna drag it on. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see that if I increase the radius here, it changes how the bulb looks. Changes the intensity of the bulb. So you can come here on the left and play around with all the features you want. Choose a color. You know, let's, I'm good with green, greenish. But let's pan out a little bit. And that just gives it that little bit of a Boom. So that's basically how I made this effect. Now for me, VFX work is all about performance and the effects come second. So do use this as a way of understanding how the tools work, how the effects work, not really just copying it verbatim, you know, don't do another light, light bulb thing. Draw your own thing, make it cool, make it yours. That's what it's all about. If you got anything from this, if there was any value from it, do give it a thumbs up so someone else can watch it. Leave me a comment if you got any questions and smash the subscribe button. <laughs> Let's grow this channel. All right, now as always, think about it, be about it, and then cue my music. Hey!